Hello, this is Martha again from Business Online Learning. In this little training, I'm going to give you some tips on how to do reports. This is me here and Business Online Learning is a resource for people who want to progress in their professional lives with a lot of training material available and several ebooks because the basis of the work I do is to help you to go confidently in the direction of your dreams and to live the life that you have imagined. So check out the website if you would like to see more about these books. The aims of this training are to give you a general overview on reports, to give you a template for a short report and to give you advice how to write reports. Now a report is a presentation of facts and its purpose is usually to give those facts to others so that they are evaluated by them or to help others in decision making or simply just to inform other people within the business. Your report can vary in length, format, style and content. It all depends, of course, on their purpose and who you're targeting, or who is your reader. There are different types of reports. You've got your routine reports where you frequently submit reports to people. Then you have special reports on a very particular investigation, experiment or topic. Then you have your long reports, which are typically f on larger issues. For example, uh, once a census has been carried out, these are the details, this is, these are the results. And then you have the short reports. And I'll focus on the short reports because they're more frequent. Let's start off with a little advice for writing your report. The first question you have to ask yourself is what's the purpose of this report? Is your aim with it to provide information? Are you wanting to make your recommendations known or are you simply giving your analysis of facts? Once you know the purpose, you decide who is your reader. And then once you know your reader, what does this reader already know or are there gaps that you need to fill and include that information within the report? You have to be very clear on what level of detail or background information is required. The worst thing you can do is to talk over people's heads. You will not get a response in that way. Look at the important question of confidentiality. Think about what levels of confidentiality are required so that there are no breaches or disclosure of critical or sensitive information. Ask yourself if and how many images you can use because it's very true what they say. A picture says more than a thousand words. What images, graphs or charts can you use to express important points? What's your style going to be like? Just cut out any fluff, be very clear and concise, remain factual, accurate, unbiased and professional. Consider too how this report will be delivered. Will it be sent by email, by post or by hand? If you are sending by email, make sure that the subject line in the email clearly indicates the title and the purpose of the report because we get a lot of emails these days and your report could be easily overlooked or skimmed by. In your report, you will more than likely have a call to action and this needs to be managed. Give clear deadlines for any feedback you may require, such as approvals or requests for information in this timely fashion and manage this. When the deadline comes, ask for what you have re requested. When you're doing your report, make sure it appears well. Use no more than two font sizes or two font colors. For example, what I often do is I use headlines in one color and the normal text in another color. This makes for easy reading. Please use very few of these symbols as they really lack seriousness or professionalism. And your report will be more professional if you write in the third person using sentences like there were, it was decided, it was found to be, and sentences like this. So next we look at the structure of the short report. Now you have given the general framework. Typically, a short report will start with the title. You will then give a two or three sentence listing of the terms of reference. Then you have your method of procedure, then your findings, your conclusions, your recommendations, and then you sign it with the date and your contact details. Just going into these once again, you start off with your title. This should be a clear and concise name for the report, describing the main content or the main purpose of the report. 
For example, this report is on key customer interview results from March to May 2017. Very clear and cannot be confused with another report. Then you list your terms of reference. This refers to the purpose, subjects and limits of this report, normally only one or two sentences long. For example, this covers the sample interviews we held with key customers to determine the customer satisfaction rates and areas of improvement. These are your terms of reference. Next, you define your method of procedure. In this section, you describe how the investigation or research was carried out. Make clear references to any forms for surveys, interviews, questionnaires, observations or experiments that you use or used to reach your conclusions. For example, we made telephone contact with the customers and asked the questions as set out in the CRM questionnaire dated 12th of January 2017. In findings, now this makes up the main body of the report, and I cannot stress it enough, deliver this in a very clear, concise, logical, objective and impersonal manner. In order to make it clear, use headings and subheadings, use bullet points, use quotation marks and clear paragraphs with maybe 1 to 1.5 line spacing. Next you have your conclusions. Based on the findings, the information you give here must be unbiased and professional. Clear conclusions as a result of the work you've done. And now you come to your recommendations. You always present recommendations in a report in a descending order of importance. This means the most important recommendation comes at the top and the least important recommendation comes at the bottom. Give practical suggestions based on those findings and your conclusions. Now finally, give your report your signature and give the date and a means by which people can contact you. So to recap, the structure of a short report is First your title, then your terms of reference, then your method of procedure, then your findings, then your conclusions, your recommendations or call to action, and then your signature, date and contact details. The aim is to make your report a valuable one by keeping it professional, clear, concise and logical with a clear understanding of the reader with just enough details, not too much, and a clear call to action at the end. So, we've come to the end of the video. If you've liked this, I'd be delighted if you joined me on either Facebook, Business Online Learning. I have a lot of videos such as this on YouTube. I'm on Pinterest with Business Online Learning. On Google Plus with Business Online Learning Community. You can connect with me on LinkedIn as Martha Begley or on Twitter with Online Martha. Delighted you could join me today. I hope this was well worth your time. Best of luck with your reports.